Hello and welcome to Interpreting Wine's Priceless Cities Best New Bistro Award Series. I'm, of course, your host and podcast founder, Lawrence Francis. This two-part mini-series will air on the podcast between episodes 306 and 307. And across these episodes tells a story of the collaboration between Le Fooding and Mastercard in creating a new type of awards taking place simultaneously in London, Mexico City, New York and Paris. We'll hear from representatives of both Le Fooding and Mastercard, taking time to understand their individual history in the culinary space, before discussing how these came together to form the Priceless City's Best New Bistro Award. The voting period for the awards will be open until October 25th, 2019. So if you're listening before that date, do head over to bestnewbistro.com to get involved. And without further ado, here's today's episode. Today's episode of the podcast features Christine Dublay, Head of Editorial at Le Fooding. We hear her origin story and transition into the food writing world. We get a deep dive and understand better what Le Fooding is and does. We focus on the Le Fooding Guide before discussing Priceless City's Best New Bistro 2019 and what is to come for Le Fooding. Enjoy. My name is Christine and I'm the head of editorial at Le Fooding. Um, I've been working at Le Fooding for almost five years now. I'm currently working on uh, the fifth edition of the guide that I've been present for. It's our 19th edition. Uh, and previously, I worked for Danielle Boulou in New York, um, also in the editorial department, um, which is, I guess, a bit funny since I went to law school and business school. Uh, so unexpected, um, but I've always loved food and really um, I'm still attached to, I guess, print, uh, which is why I ended up at Le Fooding because it's one of the, um, you know, rare, uh, I guess, companies that still values print and puts print first, uh, which is something I like, um, while also, you know, moving forward digitally with you know multiple websites and our app yeah it's always interesting to me when you know come across guests who you know i guess have made you know on the surface on the on the face of it quite a quite a big leap you know from business and law into into the food sector into the the writing sector so yeah could you maybe i guess yeah kind of flesh that transition out a bit more for us um i don't know if it was a big, I guess I started going, I went to law school and all while I was studying, um, starting my first year of law school, I actually worked for a food and wine magazine um, doing translations. Um, and I continued doing that for about seven or eight years all throughout my law and then business school studies um, and also worked on a number of book projects, uh, all food related um, and worked in cooking schools over the summer when I would go home for vacation so I guess I never really thought about it and then when I was looking for um, an internship uh, after business or you know during my business school um, studies it ended up being at a restaurant and then everything I guess sort of made sense then (laughs) because it had you know, it was something I'd already been doing for seven or eight years um, without, I guess, really thinking of it as um, sort of a career since I was, you know, sort of focused on law and then for my master's on business. Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, two two foodies uh, sitting uh, here and, uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it certainly, you know, sounds like a, a dream you know, sector to be to be in, and and, and certainly you know combines a, a couple of your your passions and, and your your great skills. So, I think yeah, what what would be really interesting, you know, given the given I guess the um, the build up that you've given there, you know, just take us a little bit in, inside, you know, your kind of day to day. What what is that kind of looking like? Yeah, at, at the moment in two thousand nineteen. 
so I've been with, um, as I mentioned, the fooding for almost five new, five years now. Um, I'm working on my fifth guide for them. Um, but as head of editorial, I also um, am in charge. Of, I'm in charge of all editorial projects for Le Fooding. So that does include our print guide, um, all of the content that goes onto our website, um, and our you know growing international projects. Um, so this year, I guess is has been kind of a different year because my time has been split between you know the French guide, which includes Paris and all of France and our new international awards project Best New Bistro which on top of being an awards program also you know has a website and content including you know uh, reviews and recipes so um, my time is really split between France and then now the rest of the world. (laughs) A little bit of background on Le Fooding is that it was started almost 20 years ago, so next year is our 20th anniversary, um, and it was, you know, created sort of as a counterpoint to um, not only traditional guides that existed in France, but also traditional dining and um, sort of all of the traditions and um, sort of classicism that exists existed in French cooking and um, the goal was you know to highlight young uh, new chefs and young new restaurants all throughout France um, and I guess that's sort of what attracted me to Le Fooding is you know I had previously worked in fine dining in a three-star restaurant uh, and it was interesting to me um, their sort of point of view which you know was a little bit different a little bit to the side of a what many people envision as just as French cooking um, and also I get I think I sort of admire uh, the way that it gives uh, young chefs and young sommeliers and young mixologists young restaurateurs sort of a platform and uh, a place to shine so to sort of tie everything all back together you know Priceless City's Best New Bistro is also in a similar way a new awards program that aims to do what Le Fooding did by, you know, giving a new international platform for uh, young, interesting restaurant initiatives. Part of my job includes, um, you know, working with all of our, I mean, I wouldn't call them restaurant critics because that's not sort of like the terminology that we like to use, but our restaurant reviewers, I guess. And it's funny because um, there's about 50 of them all throughout France. Um, and they're anywhere from, you know, 25-year-old uh, graduates to 75-year-old retired doctors um, and sort of everything in between. So we do have a few people who are journalists and food journalists at that, but that's really the minority and it's more a group of people who are you know very passionate about food um and who usually have other jobs on the side so there's you know teachers lawyers uh uh, researchers could really be anything but you know who almost um have even more knowledge uh about food than their day jobs (laughs) so it's, it's it's interesting because also One of the things that's very important to us is every year, you know, no person is allowed to test the same restaurant two years running. Um, So it's interesting because we get, you know, very different feedback and very interesting feedback. And it allows us, I feel like, to have a better idea of what a restaurant really is because you're getting all these different personalities who are going uh, to the restaurants and have very interesting and different viewpoints. I think that's super interesting to me because I think, yeah, you're, you're then kind of almost building this kind of focus group, you know, where, where you've got different voices, you, you, you know, you've got, um, you know, different backgrounds and different ages coming through there. And you, you don't just have that, you know, one voice, which, you know, you, you often, you know, get people you know, waiting for that review from that reviewer. And, uh, you know, I think this, this feels like a more sort of, you know, egalitarian uh, and, and maybe representative way of, of, you know, just how that restaurant is being perceived in the, in the city and, and, and by the people around it and um i just yeah want to kind of you know talk a little bit back to the to the history you know because it's interesting to me that there are you know you're coming up you say to the sort of 20th edition there i mean do do you have a sense of um either you know how that approach has has changed over those sort of 20 years or even a sense of you know how those reviewers have changed over the years as well just in terms of their makeup so 
And this is all sort of secondhand knowledge since um, obviously I wasn't uh, there 20 years ago. Um, but I think when Le Fooding initially started, so it was started by Alexandre Camas and his associate at the time, they were sort of, you know, young uh, rock and roll journalists who worked for a music magazine. So, um, and who just really, really enjoyed food. And so it's funny because I guess it did start much in the same way as our reviewers are today is that they weren't, uh, you know, sort of what we think of as, you know, classically trained food critics, if there is such a thing as a classically trained food critic, because, you know, um, and I think probably what I would say is, you know, the first 10 years or so of Le Fooding as it was a supplement to a number of uh, magazines and newspapers in France, so including the Nouvelle Ops and Liberation, um, and then they've been publishing independently for about 10 years, is um, it's sort of transformed from a, I guess, a crazy idea that, you know, two young journalists had to a real uh, company with, you know, many other facets to it. Um, but I'd say that the guide and editorial is probably what's, you know, quote unquote, ch no, changed the least uh, in the sense that, you know, the idea is still to um, go to as many restaurants as possible anonymously, pay our all bills and, you know, find the most uh, new, interesting um delicious places every year yeah let's let's talk a bit about you know the, the guide itself i think it's super interesting to me that you know you're i guess in all of the the different media you know i, I think uh you know the 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 demise or the death of, of print media has certainly been overstated you know if you see what's happening with you know some really cool interesting magazines coming out there so yeah let, let's do a, a sort of a, a virtual you know leaf through if you like of the of the print you know what does that sort of look like what's in there what's it, what was it sort of look and feel like of that um so the print guide comes out every year in november usually the first or second week of november this year it's coming out on november 7th Um, and for the past few years now, the so the print guide is sort of a magazine format, but much thicker. Um, and in, the guide is split into four different sections. Um, we always have a sort of what we call the magazine section, which is thematic, and the theme changes every year. And so uh, in the magazine section, we, we like to talk about, you know, sort of what's going on in food uh, today. Uh, so, for example, um, last year, you know, we spoke about, you know, 10 very interesting trends, uh, not only in the restaurant industry, but in the food and wine industry uh, at large, sort of. Um, and then we have our sort of award section where we, uh, you know, award the best new restaurants of the year um, throughout France. And, you know, these can have anything as classic as best chef to, you know, crazy categories such as, uh, you know, best sausage and mash. So um, those are our yearly awards. And then there's, you know, the guide section. So, of course, Paris and then France. So it's split um, and it's about 50-50 Half of the restaurants are located in Paris, and then half of the restaurants are located outside of Paris. Um, and then on top of all those sections, we do have four supplements as well, little pull-out guides. Uh, so there's a hotel guide. We've been doing that for about three or four years now. Uh, a bar guide, which we launched three years ago. And this is uh, exclusively cocktail bars, since wine bars are sort of, as, as long as they serve food, included in the in the restaurant section. And then two other guys that sort of change year to year. Um, so last year we had a little pull-out map featuring restaurants in six cities in Switzerland. So it was a Swiss map. Um, and then the other pull-out was a mini guide to Brussels. And this year, um, those two guides are going to be there's actually going to be a mini Switzerland guide where it's much more fleshed out now with more cities because they, you know, Uh, the map was such a hit last year. And then the map this year is going to be, um, we, we also last year launched a new category called Chef de Bond. Um, and the goal is to, you know, uh, talk about and to promote females in the restaurant industry. So um, female chefs, female sommeliers, female winemakers, female bakers. Um, and that previously was just on our website. And now it's also going to be included in the print guide. Okay. 
a lot of information. <laughs> That for me, that really brings it home. It really, you know, I think all of those different um, sections, and yeah, f for me, you know, thinking about that there, it, it seems nice that there's there's almost like there are those sort of you know, so much fixed, but you know, there are those sort of reliable areas that you're talking about there in terms of yeah, perhaps the awards and the trends, which you know, obviously they will change, but. I guess people are, are expecting, um, and then you've you've kind of given yourself the liberty to to change those uh, those supplements and and what they are and what kind of what their scope is. And it, it's it'd be really interesting for me to hear you sort of link, I guess, that and the the magazine and the, the physical back to then the digital. You know, what, what are the sorts of um, yeah, I guess in a similar sort of way, what is the sort of experience that you're you're trying to deliver? Uh, to complement the magazine in, in the in the digital space and, and yeah and, and I guess how do those how do those differ between the website and the app? So I guess what's interesting or what's different between obviously the print and the website is that the print only comes out once a year, um, whereas our website you know it's live and living 365 days a year. Um, so the website is you know we have a new publication every year. So, uh, not every year sorry we have a new publication every day um and um we have you know two restaurant reviews per week uh we have a hotel review per week a bar review per week um and also original content that is created and destined only for our website um so that could be anything. Sometimes there'll be, you know, seasonal maps, uh, you know, where to get uh, the best summer cocktail in Paris or, um, you know, the five best new terraces uh, across France. So um, a lot of original content uh, so that our readers, you know, have um, interesting stuff uh, to read every day. And also, you know, we think it's important that even though obviously the print guide and the website are linked, um, that, you know, the website is also, uh, you know, not just a digitalized version of print, but um, it's actually its own living, breathing thing. And um, then the app, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I think it's been around for eight years because I've been here for five and I think it was probably around for three or four years before I got there. Um, so the app is more sort of really, you know, a useful tool. It's sort of, you know, the guide in your pocket, but that's obviously linked to your location. So, uh, you know, it, it more just has really the guide content in the sense, you know, our restaurant reviews, our hotel reviews, and are just sort of like quick daily news. Um, so it's, you know, very helpful and useful. Obviously, you can be anywhere in France and just switch on your app and uh, find a Le Fooding recommended uh, restaurant near you. So this feels like a really interesting time to actually be interviewing you and, and yeah, looking ahead. I mean, we got to be here sitting down today, you know, because of what's happening with the Priceless City's Best New Bistro Awards. And, you know, we will, you know, get that will be where we end up in this conversation. But um, I, I do as well, you know, in kind of, you know, classic style here. You know, I do just want to, you know, get you to, to kind of talk us through kind of the evolution of that process really because you know a lot of what you've been talking about here and you know a lot of in terms of the guide and and, and the app and the website is it has been very much focused on france and and, and paris and and that's a you know i guess a culinary world kind of all in itself and you know is and so it's amazing things with food and wine and you know just just you know amazing place but you know where where you're ending up now with the with these wards in these four different cities that's obviously then kind of opening up you know, almost like Pandora's box that's then, uh, you know, stacking on. So, so I think, yeah, just to, you know, kind of make the link really, just to understand internally what, what has that process been like? What was the seed for that? And then how has that seed sort of, you know, grown and, and germinated into towards what we're, you know, talking about and looking forward to? Um, so I think the Priceless Cities Best New Bistro program was sort of, born from the idea that, you know, obviously, even though we are a Paris-based um, restaurant guide that, you know, covers obviously Paris and all of France, we've always had an eye on everything that's going on, you know, outside of France. And even though, of course, you know, France is a um, 
sort of, you know, the birthplace of gastronomy. Um, you know, there's a lot of interesting and exciting food um, happening in, you know, all around the world. So uh, we sort of, I guess, wanted to launch an awards program um, sort of in the same vein of, uh, you know, what we do in France, um, which is, you know, to reward and highlight the most um, interesting, inspiring um new uh spots of the year um and so it's you know something we've been talking about for you know quite a while now um and uh, thanks to mastercard it's something that we're finally able to get off the ground this year and we're you know very excited so in this first year of uh the program um, obviously, you know, we would have loved to launch in 50 cities worldwide. But, you know, when you're getting a project off the ground and you're launching a new website and, you know, recruiting a new correspondence, it's also, um, you know, important for us to do things well. Um, so, you know, we're launching just in four cities for the first year. But the idea is, you know, for that number to grow uh, every year. So the first cities are you know, of course, Paris, which, you know, would seem kind of obvious since that's where we have our home base. Um, New York, which was sort of, you know, a home away from home for Le Fooding for many years um, because uh, we held, you know, a number of events uh, in New York for many years. Um, London is, you know, very interesting because it's sort of, uh, you know, the city that, you know, allow was the first city to, like, allow food and pop culture um uh, to join together and so it's a very interesting uh, sort of uh, melting pot city um, as well and then Mexico City is sort of uh, I wouldn't say the future but it's you know sort of a place that uh, I guess especially this year that a lot of people are turning to and looking to because there's a lot a lot of exciting things happening in um, the food industry in Mexico City right now. Yeah, so we know now, you know, the, what the four cities are and, you know, a little bit of a flavor of kind of why they were chosen in the first place. But, you know, being as we are sort of, you know, kind of midway through the, the process, I wonder if you'd just, yeah, flesh it out for us a little bit about, you know, how we've got to where we are in the process and, and what are the, the steps that kind of we, we can expect to take place simultaneously in these four cities as we you know, look ahead to November and the, the announcement of the, the you know, the, the winners of the, of the first inaugural awards. So how the awards sort of uh, process um, has been broken down is uh, we had correspondents in each of the four cities who were testing restaurants starting in February. And the idea, of course, the you know, sort of the most important element is to only be testing new restaurants. Um, so anything opened in the past 12 to 18 months starting from or going back from the awards announcement which is in November so anything opened after May 2018 um, and you know it's very important for us to sort of this criteria of new is really you know what we wanted to focus on what's happening in food today um, city by city um, so our correspondents you know have been you know eating 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 uh, for many months now um, and this was about you know from like February to end of July um, and then the idea in July August was sort of um, you know not that this is absolutely not a ranking. It's just sort of a list of all the places we enjoyed eating at um, this year. Um, but then in July, August, we had sort of, you know, a period of shortlist testing and narrowing it down to uh, what we call sort of our top three. Um, and that's going to be announced on September 25th. And what's sort of interesting and different is the public is then going to get to vote um, among these top three on what was there you know, sort of favorite place of the year. So, you know, their biggest crush, where did they have the, mo you know, the best, tastiest, most enjoyable experience. Um, and that voting period is going to run from September 25th to October 25th. And then on October 25th, um, you know, you'll be able to buy tickets to attend the award ceremony dinners, which will be happening in each city on November 25th. So obviously you're not going to know where you're going to be dining until uh, the day of. Um, but then, yes, we'll have these sim simultaneous events um, in each of the cities on November 25th and announcement of, you know, our best new bistro of the year.
So just to sort of break down some of the decisions, first starting with the testing, I did want to touch on something that um, maybe a lot of people don't know, but um, for our restaurant guide in France, the only uh, fixed criteria that we give um, our reviewers is, would you go back? So it's the only question that they have to answer when they decide whether or not they want to review the restaurant. Would you go back? Would you take a friend? Would you take your brother? Would you take your mother? Um, you know, who would you go with and why when you're not being, you know, obviously paid to go? Um, and in when building this award, you know, we did create sort of a list of criteria and things that are important to us, you know, uh, focus on ingredients, um, you know, uh, a young, interesting uh, staff with, you know, diverse background, um, different kind of cuisines. Um, but, you know, above all, and this is sort of what links it back to the French Guide, the most important that is that every decision that's made in a restaurant has meaning and is thoughtful. Um, and to me, that always is going to give a positive uh, experience where you're going to want to go back. So that's just about, you know, sort of the testing phase. Um, and then we did decide to include a public vote, um, I think for a few reasons. I think that the idea of a sort of uh, all-knowing um, expert is a little bit, um, you know, with, you know, very opaque uh testing methods is a little bit outdated um, and we did want people to you know uh, feel involved and you know that they had a voice and that these were restaurants um, you know that they could go to and also give their opinion on since you know part of the goal also is for this list you know to present accessible restaurants that people can see and they can go to you know uh, contrary to uh, you know places that you have to revert reserve six months in advance and then shell out you know 400 pounds for um, so you know this sort of is like the second element to that is not only can you go to these restaurants but you can sort of uh, express how you um, felt about them um, but it is important to us, you know, since the project is called Priceless Cities, Best New Bistro, um, you know, all of the the places that we're testing are really sort of linked to the city. So we wanted people um, as sort of a sort of like fun um, way to vote is that they need to, you know, really prove that they know the city that they're living in. Um, so when you'll vote on the website, you will have to answer a very short, I promise, and fun questionnaire just to prove that, you know, you are a Londoner, you are a Parisian, you are a New Yorker, uh, you are a Mexican, etc. Um, and then finally for the award ceremony dinner, um, we also didn't want it to be, you know, event that's just only uh, industry and business oriented. It's important for us once again that the public can attend and, you know, uh, share um, this moment. Um, but obviously, since we're not revealing the prize until the day of, uh, you're going to be able to purchase tickets a month in advance. And then on the day of, you'll be notified either by text message or email where you're having dinner that night. So it's almost you're going to be the first to know who um, is the winner since it will only be announced later in the day. So I think it's an interesting addition to you know what's going on out there in the in the award space. I think there's a lot of creative ideas here that I'm not hearing a lot of other places. So yeah, I'm just you know anticipating and and sort of looking forward. And and that's really the the theme of my last question. Really is to you know seeing as we are sitting here you know 11 or so weeks out from from that final awards dinner from that announcement. Uh, I kind of just yeah want to you know give you the chance to you know capture this moment in time really and, and and just get a sense of you know what how are you feeling at the moment you know and and what are you sort of anticipating and what are you sort of looking forward to over the next sort of 11 and a half weeks um i guess you know this project has been as we discussed a long time coming so it's exciting now that you know testing is uh finished that you know the short list is coming up soon um and it's especially exciting i guess to me to see how you know people are going to be able to participate and uh react and um you know how they're going to enjoy the awards because you know we've been enjoying them for six months already so um you know, they will be able to follow along both on our website, bestnewbistro.com, and on our Instagram account, which is also just Best New Bistro, um, and really sort of, you know, follow along with us on all these upcoming steps and getting to know the chefs and the sommeliers and all the people um, behind these great restaurants. 
Okay, you seem, seem very calm. So. <laughs> uh, <a> Calm-ish. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Christine. It was a pleasure sitting down with you and getting to hear more about Le Fooding and the awards. You can, of course, find the website and main social media handles for Le Fooding below, as well as the websites for Priceless and Best New Bistro. The voting period for the awards remains open until October 25th, so if you're listening before that date, then do get involved. And the awards dinner will take place simultaneously in all four cities on November 25th, so do mark that date in your calendar. To find out more about the Interpreting Wine podcast and how you can subscribe, do head over to interpretingwine.com forward slash listen. And next time in this mini-series, we'll be hearing from Kirsty Redfern of MasterCard. See you then.